Welcome back to part two of the War Machine build. What's up everybody? I'm just G and welcome back to the channel. So if you clicked on this video, you probably can't wait to see the update of this War Machine build. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Cura Slicer to cut up such a complicated piece without messing up any of the detail and I'm gonna show you how I arranged it on the build plate so you can print it on your printer. Also, I use four different techniques on how to glue these back together so I can assemble the back piece to my war machine suit. This is an information packed video, so make sure you get your pen and your paper because this is gonna be a good one. This video is also sponsored by PCB Way, but more on them later. All right, so what's going on everybody? So this is Mesh Mixer. And right after I got done sizing up my armor for my back, I go ahead and import it over to Mesh Mixer. This way I can go ahead and slice up this print into smaller chunks so I can print it on my build plate. Now, this has a lot of detail on the back, a lot different than my War Machine video on the front because there's a lot more detail and I don't wanna mess that up. So what I try to do is I try to divide this up into as many pieces as I can without digging into the detail pieces. Now, what do I mean? I was able to get this piece into, I think there's 12. Oh, I didn't make a 12th cut, but I'll show you that in a minute. Real easy to make a slice. You're gonna to go to the edit tab and then you're gonna do a plain cut. From there, it gives you this little, basically plain, and you're just gonna add it to where you wanted to cut. So I wanted to cut this back piece out because I was gonna resin print it. So if we rotate this around, now you can see that it's at a 90 degree plane right here. And I'm gonna move it over until I have basically the middle part cut out. Then when you accept it, you're gonna make a slice and then you're gonna have a whole separate piece like that. I did that a few more times until I got all these pieces that I wanted. And then I was able to import each piece over to my slicing software where I'm gonna show you the next part. So here we are at Kira Slicer. This is what tells my printer how to print out the piece. This is the bottom left piece. You can see right here, if I were to flip it over, you can see it's the back bottom left. Now, the best way I know to print these out is if I is that if I actually print the slice on the place where I sliced it. So I made the slice right here. That's gonna be my flattest surface. I want that on the build plate, just like that. Now, one thing about my settings, I have a point six millimeter nozzle so I can print a little bit faster and a little bit thicker. So right now I'm at a 0.3 layer height, as well as I have organic supports or tree supports. Because I sliced it up, it gives me shorter print times, which here is 10 hours. And if we take a look-see, it printed out the supports, not even a whole lot of supports. So the way I have it oriented, it's going to print less supports so it can print faster. Now, if we go to my resin slicer, it's a little bit different than my filament slicer, but it kind of works the same way. Because it prints upside down, basically, we have to have the supports different from how we have it on the FDM printer. Here's the parts that I want to have all the, the, the designs and the detail. Where you see yellow is where I need it to be supported. So once I do all that, and I slice it all up. I have to add my supports, which you can see right here. These are my supports. And then I just printed it out this way. The supports break off pretty easy and I have my resin prints. So after slicing this up, I kept the middle piece because that has the most detail. The only way I can get that kind of detail is with a resin printer. There are a few different ways to get resin prints to glue against other resin prints. The method that I chose was to use resin. So, for the first step, I'm gonna sand down the print nice and even on both sides. That way it gives the resin something to stick to. Using like a popsicle stick, I add a little resin to both pieces of the part. I'm gonna attach them very carefully because if you move just a little bit, it's gonna throw off the alignment and it's not gonna be straight. Once you think you got the pieces straight, use a UV light to cure each piece. Now I went ahead and glued the entire back piece piece by piece by piece by piece until I had one whole resin piece. Now that I've done this for a while, I learned that gluing PLA prints can get real easy. I use 3D glue, it's the best so far. 
Don't worry now, I'm gonna leave a link to the 3D glue down in the description. Again, after sanding down the parts just a little bit, just so I can give the glue something to hold on to. Now, usually I use clamps to hold my parts together. Because these two parts are so weirdly shaped, I couldn't get any of my clamps to clamp down on it. So, what I did was grab my old soldering iron. I used this soldering iron to weld the pieces together, but they also work really well on holding parts. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a tack weld with the soldering iron. You're just gonna slightly melt each print just to hold it in place. Once the two parts are held in place, you can go ahead and use some more PLA and do a nice bead line right down the print to hold both pieces together. You're gonna let this cure for about 24 hours and then these two parts are never gonna come apart. Okay, so now that I have all the PLA parts glued together and all the resin parts glued together, it's time to combine the resin with the PLA. But I've already thought ahead because I know for a fact that if you use epoxy, you can glue PLA and resin together and have a great hold. Epoxy works a little bit different than resin and PLA because epoxy, you have two separate chemicals that you have to mix together to make the glue. Once you got those mixed together, it takes about 15 minutes for the part to hold and then another 24 hours for that to have a full bond where you can't break it apart. But guess what? Again, this was such an odd piece that I couldn't use my clamps to hold the part together. So luckily I had a little bit of resin and I used the resin just for a tack weld, just like I did with the PLA parts. That held the print long enough for me to get a nice hold using the epoxy. Now the front and the back of the armor are completed, I have to do the shoulders. That's when we come back to the sponsor, PCB Way. These are the shoulder pieces to my War Machine armor and they were resin printed by PCB Way. They also 3D print, they CNC print, and also they build PCBs for all your manufacturing needs. PCB Way is leading the charge when it comes to resin 3D printing. I mean, look at this detail. They make it so much easier if you have a part that you can't print on your printer or your resin printer can do. All you have to do is go to PCB's website, load the STL file, Tell them what do you want it made out of. They're super inexpensive and the shipping is super fast. So if you need a resin print, PCBs, or something CNC'd, PCB Way is your best bet to get it done. So here's the end result of the armor. What do you think? Look at the detail that's in the middle. I know for a fact I wouldn't have been able to get this detail if I were to use a regular FDM printer. So thank goodness I have a resin printer. The next thing I'm gonna tackle is being able to put this on. My shoulders are way too broad to try to fit into these little armholes. So I'm gonna have to come up with a way to cut these down without getting rid of all my detailed parts. But the hard part is done and that's printing it out. So how did I do? Did the armor come out like you thought it was going to? How do you guys glue your 3D prints together? Do you use resin? Have you guys tried 3D glue? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'm very close to making partner, so just keep supporting me. If you guys wanna see how I built the front part of my War Machine armor, you can go ahead and click over here. And if you wanna see how I built my War Machine helmet, you can click on this video right here. If you guys like this video and you've learned something, Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because it helps the algorithm and it shows my videos to other people. And if you wanna see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you know when I upload my next video. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you being here. Everybody have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace out.